the book where I'm coming from with this Masonic uh, knowledge is, is from that little book. Okay, so, yeah, uh, that's the reason I wanted to wait till the end of the class, because I'm trying to make you all students. Uh, like I said, I'm not here to entertain you. So a class is not the end or the beginning of anything. It's an introduction to, that sends you on the right literary direction, technique direction, and a, and a level which brings you to a level of awareness. That's what any fair-minded teacher should do. Uh, should not be afraid of the camera. Should not have some knowledge he cannot write and, and be recorded. You know, that's all. Okay. Okay, we'll just start here and expect our other colored uh, Negro members to come along till they become Moorish and get on the, the sidereal time clock. I'm doing the talking here, young lady. Uh, what we want to do is start where we left off, and as I recall, unless somebody else can intercede for me, we were talking about the 15 workers uh, that Hiram Abiff brought with him uh, to build the, the, the temple of the Lord, which has become known as uh, Solomon's temple. But if you look at chapter 7, verse 1, you see Solomon started to build his own temple, and it took him 13 years. So we can get into what we're going to talk about as mathematical symbology by mentioning the number 13, which most of the American Negro public, plus 89.9% .9 of the Euro-American public, thinks 13 is a bad luck number. This hoax was started in the 15th, 16th century by those that were in charge of the knowledge and hiding stuff. Uh, the Masonic Order and the Church, so that 13 became a psychological phobia. You know, so people stop putting 13 on their door if their house was the 13th house and stuff like that. In fact, uh, one of the buildings in Cleveland, Ohio, was 666 on Euclid Avenue. Do you know they changed it to 688? Yeah, real superstition. Is it, yeah, uh, this is in Cleveland, Ohio. Thirteen represents the occult number of hidden knowledge. It is the twelve plus one. It is the table, the round table of King Arthur and his knights, and the twelve disciples and the Christ. So it is the twelve powers and yourself is the meaning of 13. So gouge that little niche out there so you don't have to suffer from that phobia. When a black cat crosses your path, that is not bad luck. Mystically, it means you're about to have a spiritual experience. So we're pulling some cover off some of this myth because we have bought into superstition almost full baggage. We, we got a whole bag of stuff, you know. Man, don't be br 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 brushing my feet with that broom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. There's another one. In the salt over the shoulder. We didn't s skim the whole scale of superstition. And it spoils your, uh, the, the healthiness of your psychology if you allow that to persist. So it's important to deal with stuff like that. You know? I, I mean, it, it's not easy. You know, like I used to remember I went to play my number and I left my, my stone upstairs. I was down at the store, you know. She, you know I turned around, went back and got my stone <laughs> and hit that day. <laughs> but, I, you know, it's, it's very easy to form these little uh, idiosyncrasies, you know, that one considers to be good luck. But what you're doing is allowing some object to represent your level of confidence in what you do, what you know, what you believe, and what you're trying to accomplish. And you virtually don't need that. Uh, so the 12 are the, the great 12 in uh, masonry. 
And the first thing they are, beginning from the outside, are the 12 signs of the zodiac. The first thing. Now, what I want to do here is begin. I wanted to reach over there and get, uh, in fact, I'll let my brother do it here while he's sitting here. I think it's in, I don't know if it's in one or two. When you have some leisure time and a two or three hundred thousand dollars in the bank, you can t take a sabbatical and read Blavatsky's Secret Doctrine. It's some very interesting stuff in there. Uh, she didn't write the book in process. Those are a collection of lectures that she did over a number of years. Someone else organized them. So if you go into Blavatsky's material, go in with a question. Otherwise, you'll find yourself a bit baffled. Find the six-pointed star in the circle. Uh, I don't know which one. I think it's in the one on science. Turn to 1 Kings chapter 7. In the book of the body of the knowledge of yourself. 1 Kings chapter 7, which I ask everybody to read. Thank you. This is the, the, the word. I want. Let me first deal with this. In your, and those of you who have the King James verse, you'll, you will find the word capital, uh, uh, chapter. But you will not find this word in the dictionary. You will find C H A R, uh, C H A P uh, T E R. I looked for it. Chapter. This might be an old spelling. Uh, we'll get back to that in a minute. What I, what I want to point out here, in terms of this being a summation of the construct of the zodiac itself and that what is believed because there's no pictographic evidence that King Solomon's temple was constructed as a z blueprint of, zo of the zodiac that, that's what quote is believed unquote what this chapter does is verifies that as representing the knowledge that the temple represents the knowledge of self and zodiac. That's what the, 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 the chapter virtually does. Uh, verse uh, 16, no, excuse me, verse 15. And he fashioned the two pillars of bronze. Eighteen cubits was the height of one pillar and a line of 12 cubits measured the circumference thereof, or of both. Did you get that? The circle and the line. We're going to look at that. You, you, you didn't see it yet? It's supposed to be a pullout sheet. It's not in there, huh? Must be a cheap edition. Uh, the, okay. The circle and the dot. Now you'll see a big illustration of a six-pointed star with a medallion at the bottom of it. Okay. The first, what we mean by mathematical symbology is that mathematics in their statement of numbers makes reference to the knowledge of self in its construct form. By construct form we mean what this particular letter represents in Masonic lore. The ancient star does not have a G in the center of it it has a dot in it. This particular symbol is where they 
translated this star. In other words, they put the two together. Okay? But they used the, the Latin letter G that represents geometry and geometer as well as gnosis which is spelled yes uh, g-n-o-i-s g-o-n-s-i-s isn't it G-O g-n-o-s-i-s i think gnosis which means knowledge geometry represents <laughs> The ability to measure the angle of a thing and straight lines and to prove the edges most efficiently of buildings because you're dealing with uh, uh, construction that must balance itself. Geometry deals with the compass in terms of the curved arc structure of the circle to verify the degree of that circumference okay Th those are it's two the, the reason you see this in terms of this I, I should have brought the symbol in terms of this symbol here compass and the square okay what we just talked about here is the circumference of and the line the circle and the line are the ingenuitive structures for all of creation specifically for the measuring of self towards the knowledge of the Son of God to the measure of the fullness of the statue of Christ or Cres as we know it in terms of its ancient form or name form with the dot in the center of the circle you have the beginning of measure the abstract of this level of knowledge in terms of geometry is points or point when the point is centered you have north and south in astrology you have Capricorn and cancer by being able to measure the north and south you then automatically are able to measure the horizon zero degree Aries or east and west uh, is that a, a Leo? Uh, 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 Libra. Okay. What I'm trying to point out here is that this particular chapter, more than any other, deals with three different levels of knowledge in terms of the, the geometrics of the universe and the geometrics of your very nature based on the science art and philosophy of astrology okay it's all right there in, in chapter 7 it was why I wanted you to read it and I still want you to read it okay let me see what else a little secret I had here the capital concept uh, I had a picture of one I didn't bring my dictionary <coughs> is the no that's right I do is a structure at the top of the pillar that is a round surface of course in terms of the circumference of the, the, the reading each word gets you into the knowledge of what is mentioned here rather than going through it as a 
paragraph or a verse, you know. He also made two capitals of molten bronze to set on the tops of the pillars. The height of the one capital was five cubits, and the height of the other capital was five cubits. So if you got two cubits, one is five, the other is five, what do you have? No, you don't. What do you have? No, you don't. What do you have? No, you don't. What do you have? Opposites. Five female and five male. Okay. The law of gender. Okay. So the principles are right there, but this is called mathematical symbology. Okay. I got an, another little thing I want, I want you all to, to know about. I don't have a, a, uh, the facility here to, to show it to you, but I'll also going to point it out. Okay. The two principles of nature are male and female. All of nature is male and female. <laughs> and the black man needs to know that the way he's been treating, mistreating, and his attitude about his woman. She is not his servant. She's not his footstool, his doormat. She's his help meet. That's on the plane of balance, my brothers. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and we better get that one together. <laughs> okay. With these points set, we have the quadrant of the circle. We have the ability then to measure every degree within the circumference of. You see, with this cross that comes from the dot or the point in the circle, in the center of the circle, whose center is what? Where is the center of infinity? Thank you, my brother. And its circumference is? Nowhere. <laughs> okay. All right. The re my emphasis here is, is this level of knowledge of your ancestors. And to yank back from the European who has accredited his ancestors, the Greeks, with the knowledge that his teachers, Pythagoras, Euclid, and a few other Greek boys, learned from the grand masters of the Moorish Science Temple, <laughs> the Pyramid of Giza, the ancient Osirian mystery system now called. This whole chapter deals with that level of information. Now what I'm going to do is, is kind of jump back and forth here between this subject matter and where we're supposed to be going with uh, Hiram Abith. But remember the theme, the center of this particular chapter is, this level of Masonic information is Hiram Abith. It is not Jesus, okay? But again, as a symbol, not as a person. So we don't find ourselves trying to kneel down to Hiram Abiff. You know, like the, the brothers first thought that uh, uh, Benjamin Banneker Bay was Hiram Abiff reincarnated. Then they got to the point where, no, he must be Jesus reincarnated. The brother's statue was high. <laughs> you know, must be Jesus, man. You know, They were almost bowing down to the brother, you know. And I'm pretty sure he didn't want that. So, where we are now with Hiram is at the three burials of Hiram. Uh, now, this information, this level is not scriptural, okay? It does not deal with Hiram's death. It is contrived from the story of, as the lore of the Masonic story continues. That he, he was, remember, he was killed in the, in the temple as he tried to escape through the east gate. And of course, we understand that makes reference to the seminal fluid, the vita libra, the power that transforms us, okay, that moves throughout the body. Revelations chapter 22. 
provides us with that concept along with an understanding again of Mother Zodiacus, the Zodiac, in relationship to the Great Twelve on another level, not as the Zodiac, but as the Twelve Glands in the human body. Okay? When you talk symbology, you're talking wisdom. So it never means one thing. Wisdom comes from higher mind. The base of that wisdom is inside the knowledge of 360 degrees of 12 symbols that have been used to circumscribe the architecture of the grand man who is yourself a duplicate of the universe. Okay, that's what we're talking about. That's what the knowledge is about. You just keep on getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more invisible and more invisible and more invisible and more powerful. We are not going outside of 360 degrees. If we do, we cannot use language. We cannot name anything outside the circle of 360 degrees. Okay. So Hiram, after being killed, is then buried by the three ruffians. <coughs> then Solomon comes along and raise and resurrects him or raises him. Now this is this is not Moorish, okay? This is strictly Masonic in terms of the stand up, my brother. The raising of, and I'm just gonna now don't go try to, to do this with a mason, okay? Because he's gonna give you another symbol and you won't know what it is. Turn sideways. No, this way. You won't know what it is, and you'd be standing there looking stupid, thinking you're getting in good with the mason. This is the grip, the hand grip of the lion's paw. Three fingers in the middle, the, the baby finger and the thumb on the outside. Oh, open your hand, open your hand, your, your fingers. Okay. Place your three fingers here on my pulse. Okay. And the thumb is pressed between the back of the thumb and the back of the index finger. Okay. That's the lion's paw. Now what the Grand Master does when he gives him that grip is he promises him power is what, is what the resurrection means inside the lodge. Okay. All right, thank you, my brother. Sit down. But you don't need to do that. I mean, okay, you, you, we're Moors, not Masons. If you want to become a Mason, then fine with me, you know. I, I'm not encouraging you to join the Masonic Order. But I want you to, to be knowledgeable, you know. Uh, not necessarily knowledgeable in the language of the brethren, because that's for the inside circle. That's for their favors and their relationships so that they can get and give and help each other inside this circle. But I, I don't, you know, I, I'd rather you had know something about it so you don't stand around looking like you just got off the turnip truck. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, we talked about, oh, what I wanted to do. We talked about Hiram Abif, Huram Abi, King Hiram and the king of Tyre, knowing that, discovering that Hiram is three different aspects of nature with those three different names. Abi is given in the Bible. The Masons refer to him as Abif. I don't know if some other text gave Abif or not. This is, what's the other letter for I? No? Anybody? Thank you. Hiram Bay. Okay. Hidden in that Codex in Scriptus language. Okay. Uh, it, it, the next class you'll find out what Bay, Eel, and Ali means if you don't already know. Uh, I could tell you now, but I'm trying to keep your egos intact here. I don't want you walking out. 
Uh, let me, I wanted to cover all of this, so I'm not going to elaborate too much on the, the three deaths. But he's buried three different times and then raised three different times, okay? And it's symbolic of the physical resurrection on the mental plane that you can be raised from the dead while you have your body, <laughs> okay? From unawareness to awareness. From degenerating to regeneration. From darkness to to illumination. Those are the resurrections that we are looking for. We're not looking for the ceremony. We're looking for light. You know, and light is not just or only information. We're talking about some light. <laughs> okay. okay. Some real light. Turn to Revelations 22. Verse uh, 22 verse well, verse, verse 1 and 2. And he showed me a river of the water of life, clear as crystal, coming from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Anybody know where the Lamb of God is? The penile gland is the Lamb. That's the crook that the prophets carry. This is, in Arabic, that is lam. When you turn the crook upside down, okay, from here, this, what's called the staff of the shepherd, okay, is what the crook means. In Kemetic, it's referred to in translation as crook. You get the penile gland, gland. that's the lam, okay. That is the Lamb of God. <laughs> okay. All right. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life. What's the tree of life? Anybody? Speak up. Speak up. Unless you're talking to yourself. Nope. Nope. Come on, y'all. Now, y'all have heard this six, seven, eight different times. It's the cerebral spinal system. It looks like a tree. <laughs> you don't even have to guess about it. All you need is a picture of the cerebral spinal sympathetic nervous system. It looks like a tree with no leaves on it. The difference is your root is upright. The tree is upside down in the ground. The head. <laughs> okay. The tree of life bearing 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. How many days are in a month? How many degrees are in a decant? Thank you. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. Th those are not herbs. I'm sorry. <laughs> On the exoteric, those are herbs. On the esoteric, the hidden, those are your glands. Is where your spiritual fruits come from. And also the healing properties come from those glands. Okay. that heal the 12 nations of Israel. And the 12 nations of Israel are what? You. Well, give me another word. Thank you. All right. Don't, don't leave that fall off to the side now because that's your guideline. When you go into this stuff here, that's what you're looking for verification of. Otherwise, you get off to the periphery and get lost. Brother, what is this... Uh, How's this book on psychic phenomena? <laughs> it's interesting, <laughs> but it may not tell you doodly squat. Okay, so first you want to get as much information about self. See, and the twelve other or the other eleven human beings on the planet. Okay, and that's important to keep that perspective because that's how you erase 
these bigotry attitudes that we keep buying from the white boy. If he don't like us, I ain't going to like him. If he hates me, I'm going to hate him. Th that isn't a more. Okay? The moors don't think like that. They think from a knowledge of self, from the science point of view. Objectively, watch human behavior. You'll see it in the Oriental, in the European, and in the Moor. Okay? In fact, one day you'll walk up and see somebody with slanted eyes that looks very much like yourself. Yeah, yeah. There are only 12, okay? And that's it. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry if that disappoints anybody, except that is the knowledge of your nature. That is the order of all things under the sun. Okay. Why Solomon could, if he did, make such a statement, there's nothing new under the sun. Okay. Except new energy. Okay. Those are the twelve great, or the great twelve, okay. that's a part of the fifteen workers. Three ruffians, Jubala, Jubalo, Jubalam, and the twelve, and the great twelve. Okay. Yes. Okay. Can you explain to me one more time how you get um, the pineal gland from? From Lam as a symbol. Okay. If, if you've ever seen the pineal gland, or a picture thereof, it's shaped like this. Okay. So it's only symbolic. It, it isn't going to look exactly like, <laughs> okay. We're talking symbol here, okay. In, in terms of a, an Arabic or Kemetic word, actually, it's not an Arabic word, it is Kemetic. Okay. But in reference to what this symbol and this symbol represents. The prophets, the shepherds, were given this staff. That meant his penal gland was awake. He could see. Therefore, he could lead. Okay? Okay, so that one, the, um, the crook of the uh, prophet. Th this is the crook or the staff. Turned upside down, this is lam, the letter lam. Uh-huh which is lamb. <laughs> oh, I, well, okay, I, did I, I didn't need to do this, did I? Oh, Y'all ain't that damn slow. Come on now. Uh, you can see lamb and lamb is there. You, you don't pronounce the B in lamb. You don't say lamb, right? Huh? All right. When, the, when Jabril told Muhammad, read, he said, oh, my Lord, I know not how to read. He said, read. What was he telling him? To learn, hurry up and learn how to read? It, read is here. This is read. This is right. <laughs> this is read. <laughs> okay. The, much of the big work in the earlier period of initiation was to get this open. So the master could teach from here. Okay. Hmm? whose feasts were white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Well, it could be, because everywhere you go, your lamb goes with you. <laughs> but we don't need to get that far off, do we? Okay. I know it's interesting. I, I did a whole thing on Popeye the Sailor, the metaphysical meaning of Popeye the Sailor Man, which is so exact in its symbology in terms of the moor. You know, Popeye is unquestionably the representation of a moor with his crown, his pipe, his closed eye. That, that, that's the way Horace, remember Horace's eye was yanked out by Set. You see? Yeah. And then the anchor on, it, on his arm is the ankh, if you look at it. Yeah. Okay, let, let me get back here, okay? I'm, I'm, I give you the keys, you go find the meaning of. That's what keys are for, to unlock doors. Okay. Okay. Let me see here. Where am I now? Okay, we dealt with uh, 1 Kings 10, 14, 666 talents of gold that were given to Solomon. Anybody remember that? Okay, so I won't have to go back over that. We have here the ruffians bury him in rubbish uh, of the temple. 
the rubbish of the temple, the ruins of the temple, are the substances, spiritual substances, in your astral body that spill over into your physical body. That's what you rebuild your old body with. Okay? But you're building more than body. You're building what else with this new substance? What are the two things you're building? It's right on the front of the Bible, right? It's right on the front of the Bible. If y'all don't wake up in here, I'm going to take my gun out and go to shooting. The New Testament, the Old Testament, right? Tisti, minty, means what? Tisti means what? Minty means what? All right, let's, let's, let's move a little faster. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're building a new mind and a new body. That's what you're doing. Not just trying to get your penal gland open or to get some more energy. Okay? We're, we're trying to acquire everlasting life. <laughs> okay? Because that's what the cycle of life is about. And you can't get off that wheel until you do that deal. <laughs> okay? When you finish the wheel, then you're through with the deal. But if you don't finish, you're coming back down here, coming right through another woman's body called her mama, and start off where you left off. That's the deal. Until you wake up <laughs> and finish the things that remain. <laughs> okay? That's what it's about, okay? That's the real revolution. That is the apocalypse. <laughs> that is the revelation. You are G-O-D <laughs> and know it not. Okay? That's, that's when the mystery of God is finished. <laughs> when you finish G-O-D. All right? John 10, 31, 36. See the brother looking at me like I just said something vulgar and profane. <laughs> Okay, getting back to the G of, I want to, that's what I want to get back to, but I better do this here because I'm, I'm, I should be finished turning these pages. Then buried on Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah, if you look in the encyclopedia of the dictionary, is means head and this word imabwe which is translated means teacher Mount Moriah. Anytime somebody says they went up to the mount or the mountain, they're talking about your head. Okay. Thebes is head. Okay. Calvary is head. <laughs> okay, that's, that's the top of the mountain. And when Moses went up to the top of the mountain, he went up here. When Jesus went up to the top of the mountain, he went up here. That's what we're all trying to get to. Huh? Golgotha, yes, Golgotha. it's the skull. Uh -huh. yeah, skull. Yes, uh -huh. yes. Which is also the golden bowl that, co that contains the brain. The head is the brain, not the skull. Okay. Might be a few walking around here with a skull and nothing in it. <laughs> I've talked to a few in my time. <laughs> okay, Imabwe is an old... Uh, Sanskrit word, but it's classified in a, quote, Hebrew uh, dictionary of, of theological terms. That's why I found Imabwe. Okay. Uh, th this is what Duralis called the Moors of old. I don't want, I, I'm going to do a, one class on the history of, of the Moors. 
I think I better do that. Yes, uh huh. Yeah. But that's traditional. The, the facts don't prove that to be fact. But we'll get to that a little later. A sex power turned into food for body to build up the brain. Okay, that, that's the, the point of Revelations 22. This sex power is not the spermatosa and the ovium. It is not the organ, the genitalia. <laughs> it is the power, invisible power. By invisible, I mean it is a substance that you cannot see. That's all invisible means. It doesn't mean it's not real. And as I as pointed out, when you ejaculate, and wake up the next morning, the, the white spermatosa or ovium on your sheets has turned yellow. That yellow stain is that vita libra inside the spermatosa and the ovium. If you had not ejaculated, it would have gone up to the north gate by the westward way. <laughs> but instead, it went out the south gate. <laughs> okay. That's what meditation allows you to do, to draw the energies, plural, up the highway, which is the spinal cord. Okay. Then uh, buried on Mount Moriah, w which is in the brain, okay, dying to the physical and being born to the spiritual, okay? Remember, there is no death. There's simply the dropping of bodies, plural. You get to the astral plane, you finish, you drop the astral body. You go to the next plane, you finish, you drop that body. You go to, okay? And so you are purely primal essence with no name. <laughs> okay. With no name, the nameless ones. Because what we're trying to do is come into the circle of 360 degrees spiritually, which takes you into infinity. And you just continue to expand and expand and expand. Okay? Until you choose a plane that you want to live on, you'll have those spiritual rights as Lord of the earth when you're on earth, Lord of heaven when you're in heaven, Lord of the celestial planes when you're in the celestial realms. It's all about lordship. Okay? It ain't about flunky. Okay? It ain't but two down here, the master and the slave. <laughs> so make up your mind which one you want to do and which one you want to be. Solomon buries the body, Solomon's body is buried near the Sanctum Sanctorium. The Sanctum Sanctorium is in the inner. This is the Sanctum Sanctorium. This is where you already are, but you sleep. The soul is midway in the chest area, right behind the sternum bone, approximately the size of your own thumb trying to expand and become that son. <laughs> okay, that's what we're working for. Remember the code word is nous, right? The Greek word for mind as a code word means what? What's in nous? Look at it. It's right there. You don't have to wonder. Huh? Look at the word. Look at nous. What do you see inside the anagrammatic structure of nous? You see two sons, don't you? Son and son. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. So uh, it helps you to understand the, 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 the second verse of chapter 4 or the fourth verse of chapter 2, Malachi and the son of righteousness, S-U-N. Okay. It's the only place where you'll find Malachi 2, 4. You'll find that reference, the son, S-U-N, of righteousness. Okay. You say 2, 2, 4. Read the two chapters. They're in there somewhere. 
I'm tired of calling out these verses here. I'm, this is not Reverend Biscuits on the corner quoting Bible verses. <laughs> I think it's two pages. I want you all to, to, to A, read, B, study. You come to a word. You put the book down. Go get this dictionary, the encyclopedia. Come back and pick the book up. Put it on your lap and put the... That's how you study. You break down words. So you need the metaphysical dictionary. You need G.A. Gaskell's dictionary and any other kind of dictionary you can find. Castile's Latin dictionary is also good and, and available, uh, particularly for, for the word maurus and uh, uh, mathematica, which means astrology, <laughs> mathematician. G.A. Gaskell. Uh, G.A. Gaskell. Uh -huh. Yeah, they ain't got no... No more. We had a couple of them here. They haven't been here in a while. Can't seem to get these folks to put the right books on the shelf. Huh? Oh, well, Cas uh, uh, Castile, C A S T I L L L E, Castile's Latin Dictionary. And uh, the Tabor's Medical Dictionary, where you shall find the word onk <laughs> in the Medical Dictionary. Which is appropriate because it's the, the onk is tied on the upper wall of the female uterus. It belongs there, but he just doesn't explain it. He just said, this means everlasting life and just leaves it at that. You know? But he does admit it's Egyptian. That was interesting. Very interesting. We already know that Hiram is a widow's son. And why is Hiram a widow's son? Do we know that? Why is Hiram the widow's son? Why is the mason the widow's son? Who is, symbolically, who is the widow? No, symbolically, the widow is, is what is a widow? First, the first kind of widow is what? Oh, come on, y'all. Don't let this stuff stink back, sink back down in your head. That's the widow. The black widow is the spider, right? You were supposed to know that. All of you are supposed to know. We've been talking about the widow's son and the web. Okay. Let me, let me, let me, y'all about ready for a test. I hear it now. What does that word mean? Was y'all speak up? The police ain't in here. Speak up. Her web. Thank you, my brother. And what does her web mean? Thank you, my brother. There's my brother. He's no longer a Negro or a colored person. That's the web. We verify that by doing what? Where do we find the symbology of the web? All right, my, there's another one of my brothers and my sister waking up there. Oh, shucks, I got some moors in here now. <laughs> right, right. Now, since we're doing this, I'm going to tell you about this before it slips my mind. Everybody reach in your pocket and pull out a dollar, if you have one. If you do not look on <laughs> the person next to you. Now, this, uh, uh, brother, uh, brother Bay showed me this. Emiola Bay, so I won't take credit for it. On the left-hand side of the back of the dollar bill, just above the one, let me see if I can find it here. Man, this is this blew my mind. <laughs> blew my mind. Let me see here. No, it's not. No, we we, we already know about the spider web. No. Oh, yes, right. Yeah, it's right. It's on this. Uh, yeah, right. It's on the front side. Yeah, but it's but, but what's called magnified it, yeah. and, and it's a perfect construct of an owl. Yeah. You can't see it, sweetie. Huh? On the front, it's on the front. On the right end. Uh, the owl is more, man. I gave you the hieroglyphic for more. Yeah, and I didn't know that was there. Yeah, perfect shape of the owl. 
it, near the olive leaf, but it's a, from, from, from the eye distance, it's just a dot, you know? That was deep, man. <laughs> Now they, they understand something. If they got that level of knowledge, brother, they ain't worshiping nothing. They meditate. You know? Yeah, they 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 threw it worshiping. Yeah, but they may be in the black uh, in the black spirit if they're wearing black uh, black hoods. Well, that's not a clan hood. Okay, that, that that's a pyramidal construct. But but the clan wears it. I mean, you know, you know, just like the. The swastika is not German, you know. You know? That's why it's important for us to, to have the knowledge of, you know. Okay. I, I just wanted to point that out. It, it certainly was a very exciting piece of information for me. Okay, where am I here? Hi, I'm a widow's son, uh, and a, alone and wandering alone the elementary canal. The elementary canal is where? Where does the elementary canal begin? In the mouth. And ends in the anal septure. So it's throughout the entire body. Okay. But remember, Hiram is the seminal fluid. This substance that goes to all parts of the human body to revitalize, regenerate, and to empower. Okay, that's again symbology. Okay, we're not talking about somebody jumping in our mouth and uh, the colon. We already know that the one well, on the columns, rather, is Boaz, uh, which is again symbolic. It was broken, and we're trying to repair the spiritual aspect of Boaz and Jachin, okay, the, the cerebral spinal nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system those are jakthin or jakin and boaz okay by bridging them together in the spiritual hookup which is what your spiritual cords do that you don't you can't do that but it's done that puts them in harmony in sync that's how you get your three lights g o d The three great pillars, wisdom, strength, and beauty, as mentioned in, again in uh, masonry. In other words, three virtues of power, as we mentioned once before, the reason why the Moor wears a burgundy fez is because burgundy, the vibration of burgundy, represents the spirit of beauty. It is a real spirit. And you, you can't get it in the fundamental church. You can get the light. You can get the gold light. But you can't get the spirit of beauty. It don't dwell in there. It's up above the plane of the fourth dimension of heaven. We already know what wisdom is. Spiritual strength differs from physical strength. Yeah, yeah okay. Well, brother back there has got one. We've talked somewhat about this in other classes, so I may as well bring this up. This is seven inches. And as you see, it is the circumference of a what? Thank you. Now let me reach here. The circle seven. The circle. Seven inches. <laughs> One, two, three, four parts. You see those little openings? Four parts. The crown chakras. The dot in the middle of the circle. And this is a secret. <laughs> okay. The four, these four, they represent your crown chakra, yes dear, uh, and they're approximately the size, approximately the size of a quarter, maybe a little bit bigger, and as we note, 
That's so that your head can breathe, darling, that's all. They're a little bit bigger than a quarter, but the idea, uh, of course, is the four quarters, or the four quadrants, the four angles of the circle. And of course, the quarter has on it what? The head. So you take your orders from headquarters. Okay. Th th that's where your God speaks to you from. The three grand Masonic pillars. The three parts of the body of the triune self in terms of virtue. Wisdom is the knower. <coughs> Strength is the doer. Beauty is supposed to be the thinker. You have to work on it. <laughs> Beauty is a power. Strength is a power. Wisdom is a power. We're not talking morals. The age of morality is gone. You have to have power. Or the more charging dark forces will use you up. You'd be doing what Paul, the things that I would do, I cannot. The things that I would not, I do. <laughs> No power over his glands. That's what he was saying. Uh, that's what your children are out there doing. Behaving like animals. Because that's what the part of the body, the glands control, the animal part of the body. Where anger and murder, killing, destruction is. The limbic brain is bite, kill, and eat. Uh, that's at the center of all life form. And, and that's what many, thank goodness, it's not all of our youth are doing. Black and white, Chinese and Japanese, Russians, yeah, you know, that generation of children. The, the, you know, we come in groups down here. You ever wonder how many people were born on the same day you were born on planet Earth? In the same year? They're in the hundreds of thousands. <laughs> you didn't come down here by yourself. <laughs> okay. Strength equals Hiram, the king of Tyre. And we, all, well, we already know that. The pillar of beauty. When I say a spirit of beauty, I'm talking about a substance that vibrates that fills your being. That is what uh, I'm sure Isis had, but most assuredly Nefertiti had and demonstrated. The beautiful one has come is what her name means. It is a s feminine power, but not given only to the feminine being, of course, because we, both ha we have both natures in our nature. The Sufi strives for the spirit of beauty. Uh, probably the most illustrious of that group that we're aware of, because many Sufis uh, clothe themselves in, in the garments of the tramp. Uh, it, it was uh, Rajnish. He, he wore a beautiful headdress and beautiful clothes of the East, you know. And uh, Hazara in Ayat Khan. As dark as my shoes. <laughs> Jet black. <laughs> it w was beautiful. You know, and uh, one writer said, when I saw him, he appeared as if someone who just stepped out the Old Testament. <laughs> the brother was something, man. Yeah. His work w was to gain as many qualities of infinity as he could. <laughs> That's the one who went ah, 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 and died. <laughs> the Sufi masters. Okay. Okay, I, I think I'm finished with that. I'm pretty sure. So we've gone through Hiram a bit. There is more information on Hiram in. Uh, Ancient, uh, was it Ancient Freemasonry by, thank you, by C.C. Uh, Zane, Ancient Masonry, the Spiritual Measuring 
of Masonic Degrees, Rituals, and Symbols. Another interesting book, except he hands it to the, the Greeks and the Romans, and the other white boys here. <laughs> this is, you know, with his lying ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is the deepest one that you found. This is the deepest one you found. This is the deepest one. Not yet. That that was. You ain't got no business with that one. That that's that's too far out there. That one's way out there, man. Yeah, per Percival. But th this is a remarkable piece of, of, of condensed knowledge on Masonic symbology. An excellent piece of literature. Excellent. Every one of us in here should have this. Unfortunately, she only has about three copies. But write the name down so that they'll order some more. So that if you don't get one today, be sure and get this. Those who have not gotten the Kibalian be sure and get a copy of the Kibalian, the seven, not a one in here. Well, I mean, they just, they just, they bound, they don't, they don't hang long. They're they in and out of here. And they take it in this hand and sell it in that hand. That's good, that's good. Because my, my, one of my things I want to do is get every black man in America, I want him to, to read that book before he leaves planet Earth. So he don't come back here dumb, deaf, and what's the other one? Deaf, dumb, and blind. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, let's see. Where do I want to go from here? Any, any questions? Okay, let me jump back up here. Now, what I wanted to do, and I walked off and left my, uh, my chart... So I, I don't think I'll even try it because I don't want, I'll screw it up. We're going to look at the rule and the, the plump line. The implements or the tools of the master mason or the ancient stone mason is where the concept comes from as it's translated and retranslated from the ancient uh, school of Osiris. The, the, the gavel, as we know it pretty much, is in the judge's hand. We don't see it anywhere else usually. But in symbolic representation, the gavel represents, with the circle, the plane of planets. <laughs> 